Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, I just want to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with you. Talk a bit about programming, how to actually learn programming fast, what I do differently in these seven years since I started this, this whole career, this whole madness, absolute madness. Talk a bit about life, death, who knows where this video is going to go. And I also want to mention that there is a huge Black Friday sale deal on developbya.com. So if you're interested in learning more about web development, I have wonderful courses out there for you, all 40% off if you use the coupon code BF40. And yeah, all the courses will be updated next year as well with all the latest things. And thank you so much for your support. Let's get going in the video. So to actually understand how to learn coding fast and to become a proficient software engineer, I feel like it's very important to understand the landscape of web development. So what do I mean by that? Well, web development is such a fast evolving thing. It just, every day there's a new tool, there's a new package, there's a new framework on um, this does things better than this does, this does things better than that does. And it can get a bit overwhelming. So if I could go back in the past, I'll take you back to the past, because a couple of years ago when I was learning Redux and Webpack and all of these tools, it turns out that they don't matter anymore. And I don't care, because they were awful to use anyway. <laughs> It's better to honestly condense down the things that you learn and only focus on literally the fundamentals, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Learn those as much as you can about them. And then half of the effort should go maybe towards the most popular framework out there. Don't go for stuff like Svelte, Remix. They are nice. I like it better than React and I still code in React. Why? Because new innovation lacks maturity usually. In React, pretty much anything I want to do, I could probably find. If I run into a problem, I could probably find the Google answer much easier than on Remix or Svelte. There's more people using it as well, so you can get more help. So always, I'd say, lean more on technologies and tools that have more maturity to them than new shiny things. I wish I knew this years ago, honestly, because it would have saved me tons of time. Now that's not always necessarily true. Sometimes you pick the mature framework. In our case, like for me, it was Next.js, right? It's been out there for, for quite a while now. There's good documentation on it and everything. And there's loads of different packages that work really nicely. Um, and then they come up with a new update, a huge update that changes fundamentally everything how it works in uh, the framework. And then what happens is you get all these different packages just breaking on you and then you don't know how to use anything anymore. Do you like styled components? Do you like it? Well, tough luck. They don't work. They don't work anymore until they get updated. So it's just one of those things. It's one of those hurdles in web development that you kind of just have to accept. And yeah, lots of yoga, lots of yoga meditation. Now, number two on the list, it has to be tutorials, courses, and learning resources. We are going to continue where we left off last time. Today, I am going to show you how to create Integer. First, you type... Uh, and I honestly think it doesn't matter how many you watch, it's when you watch them. Because if you... This happened to me so many times when I did a course because I was interested in that technology, but... I could care less about the project. So I would just watch the whole course through. And by the end of that, I'm like, what? What did I learn? I have no idea. I have no idea how to apply any of these to my own project. So what I think a great way, this is probably the best tip ever for me was to actually just jump in and start making a project. And when I run into an issue, like how do I add a sign in with Google button? And how do I make that functionality work? Then I'd go out of my way to find a YouTube video or a course that covers that uh, specific topic and I'd implement it in my own project that I, I care about. And that way it's going to stick much better in my head than coding out the damn Pokemon API. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm doing all my courses project based, because I feel like if you enjoy one of the projects in the course, then you're going to have a good time with the course and you're going to pick up loads of things. Uh, if it was just covering fundamentals of like 
Well, this is how you do CSS. Here are all the properties. You just be bored to death. For number three, I'd have to say, let your hobbies influence your coding journey. For myself, I'm a, I love design, I love 3D, I love games. So I'm trying to implement all of that into my coding journey as much as possible. Take a look at the last tutorial we made. It was more of a blender and 3D project really that was implemented to a website, but it turned out really good and it was such a fun time making it. So try to find these external hobbies that you can add to your projects because you're gonna have a better time. And not only that, find out what you actually enjoy that's coding related, because it might not be web development, you know, it might be coding or it might be AI and machine learning. There's such a vast amount of different things that you can do with coding. It doesn't necessarily mean the first one you picked is the one for you. So sometimes that's that's one of those things where you do it for years and years and you actually wonder, was this the actual right thing to, for me to do? Sometimes it's not. And that's when life falls apart. So here's a big one that I don't really see people talk about is to actually try to make a project that is real world, like a, an actual physical product or a service that you can offer to people or a digital product, rather than creating another weather app or a mini puzzle game or whatnot, because no one's gonna care about that and neither will you. Um, but if you pick a project like that, you are going to know that it's going to be seen by a lot of people and they can be your potential customers. So I feel like there's a there's just a different drive in you that's going to take extra care. It's going to you're going to spend more time on that project. You're going to be more involved with it because it's something that you're going to share with people and you subconsciously you want people to have a good time with it. Right. And last but not least, it's going to be just kind of understanding and acknowledging that programming is hard and you're gonna run into loads of issues and you're gonna experience programming burnout and you're gonna have imposter syndrome. You're gonna have days where you don't feel like you're, you wanna code anything out. And it's just normal. It's just, you, you just need to be okay with it. And when it hits you, you need to realize that fact and that's okay. Uh, Kind of had that the similar thing happen to me like 10 days ago when Next.js came out, the new version, and I wanted to make a video on it, and then nothing worked. So that was fun. So that was annoying. I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna do a tutorial. I just cannot. Out of spite till everything gets fixed and updated. So yeah, anyway, hope this list helped in any, any, any way. Uh, this was a fun little chatty chat video. And yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think about the, what's the fastest way for you to learn web development. I'm curious to see. And yeah, it's Christmas time, bitch. So I'm out of this joint. <laughs>